I said there is no reason for short here. We are longing. I'll keep doubling, you keep bluffing, you've got nothing. I'll keep hustling. Welcome everybody, Crypto MC. Today, busy day. We're going to be talking about Bitcoin, FOMC, and we've got alts. There's a lot we need to work through. I'm going to take it from uh, a large time frame perspective, narrow it down to where we are on all those various coins. So there's going to be something for the long-term swing holders. There's going to be something for the scalp traders as well. And um, yeah, in general, hello. How's everybody doing? Let's quickly see who's here. I see we've got Mario. I see there's a Jack. Hello, Jack. Um, yeah, all our regulars. Stefanis, a new face. I haven't seen you. Or maybe I have. I haven't remembered. Uh, but now I will remember. And then there's our Stefan. And uh, yeah, so I'm um, happy to see you guys here. Impatient monk. Hello, Senor. Okay. And uh, right. Fingers crossed. I see your fingers crossed. I, I, I crossed. They know something. Uh, maybe they do. Uh, that's on the previous comment. We said that there's a lot of stable moving to the exchanges. I think so, guys. I, I, I've got this little tingle in me. I don't really know. That doesn't really count for an indicator. Doesn't really count for anything other than that. That's a hunch. But it's off the back of this tweet that I made uh, uh, on the 28th of August. And I said, well, we were going to do the weekly candle close. I said, it's a few hours out. I will be lying if I say no, what's going to happen. That's the reality, guys. We're all doing guesses. But I will be buying between 18200 and 18600 if Bitcoin allows me. Now, subsequently, our Bitcoin, Bitcoin, our friend, did go down to these levels. And I did buy. So I hope you guys got your BTC buys in as well. For those that haven't bought Bitcoin just yet, give me a triple seven. And for those that did buy Bitcoin, give me a triple one. Let's see, let's see where you guys are at. Um, and then, yes, I see Hi Rudo would mind checking in on Flux. Flux a little bit later. Uh, so stay tuned. I will be checking in on Flux. Um, you want a short on near? I'll see if I can maybe make something happen. Let's see. Anya, triple seven. Jack gave us a triple one. Let's see how many triple sevens to triple ones are there. I want to kind of see how divided we are. Hopefully, we do have. Uh, uh, yeah, so everybody who's in a short, let's say it like that. Give me a triple three if you're in a short on Bitcoin. The last sell zone short that we shared with you guys. I, um, I distinctly remember putting in the video late night. It was a horrible time, but I had to get it done for you guys. So, Tamara, you're in a short on BTC. Well done. Um, let's see who else has got that short here. Yeah, there's the shorts coming through. So, you guys are slowly but surely seeing the money pooling into your account. That's the nice thing about a short. And this, when you have a short covered, it gives you the opportunity and the reason to say, well, I'm willing to take a stab at a long because either way, I'm covered because my short is theoretically one structure higher of where we are now. Right, so enough of that. Let's get into this. Let's start dissecting Bitcoin to try and see what has changed. Maybe something big has changed. Um, and then we've got Ethereum. I want to get back into Ethereum. There's something there. There's some serious... Uh, I'm, I'm still waiting for that short. And there's something there. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it there. And then this one. I want to talk about Ergo as well. This is the one that I actually went out and I really wanted to grab a, a, a nice long, but now I missed my buy. So is it over? What can I do? Uh, so I'm going to touch on that, show you how I do Solana. Last time we said Solana needs to go up to this level at 33 and reject and hopefully go down to 27. Is it a case of this is only happening again? Uh, that question I want to answer with you guys. Why is 27 so important? I'm going to be sharing that with you and a few more. So we're going to be really busy. And um, yeah, so let's see. Anything else in the comments? I still see the triple threes coming through. Uh, and uh, so those guys are in the short. Well done, Cecile. Uh, and um, yeah, let's see. Short it. ETH from 1600 uh, to 1500. Buddy, you should get that short. Maybe could have turned it into a swing. I don't know what the leverage position was, though. But I mean, that would have been nice if... I still see ETH going to 800, maybe. There's, there's something there. Um, so, yes, do not classic, Jack. I think I am, look, I'm not beyond or not above any project. Uh, maybe Luna Classic can um, 
can recover some of people's funds. But I mean, for a lot of guys, it needs to go up like 60,000% for them to just be at break even. Um, for me, I won't be buying Luna Classic and holding it for long term. That's just, just, just me. It's a failed protocol. You know it. What has changed um, in the end of the day? But if you can make a good trade from that point of view, there's some really good insights there. Right. So, guys, before we move on, please hit the like. Hit the subscribe button. Hit that notification button. It's very important so that when we do these streams, you actually get notified. Um, yeah. Okay. And then now let's do this. So I'm bringing up my chart. Let's get into Bitcoin. Point and figure wise. Remember point and figure is just a tool that I use to measure volatility. We still have a couple of gaps there. So there's still a possibility that Bitcoin goes and takes away the swing short that we, that we got around this level. So, I mean, it's not we shouldn't celebrate too soon. There's still a reason out there for BTC to go up. And I want to show and share that reason with you. So I'm going to start off with Bitcoin on the weekly. So if I look at Bitcoin on the weekly, the last time around we were we were looking at on a big picture and I can clean maybe clean a little bit the screen and take away um, some of the unnecessary data that we've got. Uh, so from a weekly perspective, what we have is We've got something that that accelerated excessively out of this accumulation at the bottom here. Once it did that, it created a new yearly range, which means that from this area to this area, Bitcoin was for a year we were to go into a 12-month 12 12 candle, it was stuck within this range between 68 and 64. Now, my argument is for the great, great neck short, the one that that might set anything that you didn't manage to take profit on. Uh, that short, I still believe, is going to be sitting in the 32, 30, 32, 28 thousand dollar BTC. So from from that perspective, one can have optimistic targets to the upside. But if I'm now realistic and I'm talking about today and the next few days, what we have on the big picture is a coin that's trending down. That's it. Strong trend down. There's no, there's no denying that. Now, but what I want to try and find out is early enough to get back into this so that if it turns around, I might have a chance making some good gains. Now, what I want to do is when I, when I look at trending down, this is the previous range and this is the current range that we're moving in. If I were to look at this and I were to adjust that line because that's now out of play. And I move it to where we had our first accumulation. If I look at this area over here, and I think these lines now can be thickened up a little bit so that we can actually see them nicely and cleanly. I'm just going to do that for you guys so you can see those lines. There, those are the lines that I'm looking at. Those are the important ranges. Once Bitcoin went into this area, it was ranging within this range, and then it had a bit of a breakout. And the argument was, from this point, would have been a good buy for continuation or for a rejection at that level and another move down. It fell short to this trend line, this, trend, this momentum trend line that everybody likes to, to look at and use, especially if you're new to trading. Uh, it's nice to have a bit of a framework. Now, what I always say with lines like these guys, just as a, rem a reminder, think of it as a moving average. And what is the goal of a moving average? It's to create momentum so, um, and, and to show where momentum is at. So when the moving averages turn up and the smallest value is above all the bigger values, it's only showing you that the momentum is turning to the upside. And when we want to trade, we want to trade in harmony with the momentum. So at the moment, momentum is still down. So on the weekly time frame, we've got our important levels lined out and momentum's on the down. Now, what I want to show you guys before we move on, every time we have a big, big impulse on the downward side from there to there, you can see that the half level of that range is, is an, a, a good area for where resistance is coming in. And if we were to move this even higher, you can see that there is another level for you guys to consider. So that is why we could have dreamed of a while back. We could have dreamed of 51, you know, get above it. The argument was we will be bullish again. 
So with that being said, where's our last move? We go to our last move. We can look at that. We didn't even touch the 37, which means that there is a gap. At some stage, we can have a dream. It's not allowed, it's not wrong to have the dream to say that price can go into this area at some stage. But now at the moment, with the momentum still being down, you know, it becomes less and less probable that it's going to do it just yet. So if I look into the last impulse, we still have this 3332. And that is the relief rally that I'm still hoping for from a point of view. So to, to be optimistic and say, well, I know the trend is down, but I can be hopeful that at some stage, at least for a continuation to the downside, we can have a rally to, to at least this level of 33. And that is the reason why I am buying this. Because if I'm looking at what is happening over here, we are creating a lateral range. This lateral range is giving me telltale signs that if we start breaking smaller time frame momentum levels, we have the possibility of getting above previous resistance, which would have been 24.5, get back above 26, then our target's going to be 33. And then we can probably initiate a short at 36. Okay, so that is the idea on, on the weekly. So now I've got a big idea of where I want to go to. So I, I, I want to mark out my targets. X is the spot. So the, guy, the goal is be, go along where we are here at the bottom of the range. Minimum target for that is going to be around that area. If I can get my long to there, I'll be happy. That would be a really good take profit. And then if I want to create another swing short, the area where I'm going to want to have to, or where I'm going to have to take that short, is going to be to try and look for a reason for a short at around this level, around 22.6. That's the first time. Now, it contradicts to what I said just now, of trying to go to 33. But if we treat the market like we don't have a clue, it means every level you have to take action. Right. Now, let's go into the daily. So, big picture here, weekly, we are bearish. But on the range that we are forming at the moment, on the daily, we are ranging, which means that we can still chop up and down, up and down. So it's important if we are ranging like we are doing at this moment, we're ranging between these levels, that we would not, this level here and that level there. That's our range at the moment, again, back into this range. So if we're ranging, we need to identify where we do not want to be trading. The reason for that is, you're going to be stuck with a lot of chop. So if you get to this half level again within this range, the problem is that this is where the public is going to want to try and get back in on it. Because there you're going to get stuck with limit orders again, people buying on support and so forth. The market will get slow, it will grind. But the problem is if you're in an entry, you'll probably be experiencing, will be experiencing something similar than this, where you know, every second day or any alternative day, you're back at break even or close to break even. It's, it's a horrible place to be if you want to try and trade a swing. So your goal is to look for these crazy momentums. And this momentum buy was off the back of this. So the idea was to try and buy this demand zone. And if I have a look at this demand zone buy, I'm just going to mark this out, demand zone buy. Uh, where did my line go to? Do, do, do. Oh, the, the thing just disappeared. Oh, there it is. Okay. So if I look at this demand zone buy, the argument would be that anything between the blue ranges on the weekly is going to be where we need, on the daily is where we need to grab our Bitcoin. And if we dive onto the four hour, we'll see that you will be able to narrow that down, bring this up again. So I'll, I'll look into that now for you guys. So, so that's the demand zone buy. The argument, though, is if we want to hold demand, we can still do this and go back in it again and then start creating a range. So if you missed, if you guys feel like you've missed the Bitcoin, the reality is that you haven't, maybe. There's no, at this stage, with this candle that we've got currently printing, there's no definite uh, evidence that this is the, the turn of the tide. And then if we go into this area, if we look at the momentum, 
what we are seeing is that we are basically ranging around an axis at this stage. So not the same axis as what I draw when I, when I trade, but we're moving around an axis. We got through resistance, we're moving back down. So the, the safer money now would be to try and look for momentum to initiate itself to the upside, knowing that you've secured your short. Okay, so with that being said, we direct, the daily is ranging. So that means us as traders, we can expect a lot of chop. Simple as that. So if you get tired of trading or you feel like you're not getting anywhere, make sure that you do not trade in any half level like that because that's definitely going to be the area where it's going to really hurt you and you're going to get a lot of chops. So just, just keep that in mind. Righto. So that said, let's dive this into a smaller area. So I'm going to take away the daily and go over into the four hour. Now, what I want to do, I just want to sync this daily demand zone with all the charts. And then I'm going to go into the four hour for you guys. Right. Going into the four hour, we now can rinse and repeat. We can look at the same game plan. The argument is that if this is the low, the range low, and let's change this into that four hour red color. Da, da, da. If this is the range low, I'm waiting. Don't have it just yet. I'm waiting for the range high to establish itself. Once I have that information, I will then know whether there's a range, where my range would be. Now, what do I mean by range high? Well, say we don't make a higher high and we come back down in this area. This is going to be the area, the zone, where you can reload in on your, on your uh, long. So if you're new to trading and you want to get in and you, and you want to get a sneaky little buy-in, that is going to be the area where you would want to try and get that long in. What does this long signify? This is not a swing long. This is not a long to hold on for, for indefinitely because what we're only doing is still just checking in this range. A lot of stuff needs to happen above this red line before we can even consider about holding this longer. Right, so with that being said, if I look at this range now, I've got an idea. So the idea is 18.6 still and 18.560. That would be a great buy area. Everybody got it? Let me know in the comment section. Just give me a, a BTC or something like that. So I just know you guys are on par with this, the, the midterm, the four, four hour base buy zone. So that's going to be the buy zone I want to try. Now, everybody knows this. So what I like to do is just incorporate a little bit more price action and just give myself a little bit of an earlier entry. So 18,660 and 18,580. That's going to be the area where we want to try and grab it. So Gazer, you've got it. Anya, you've got it. And a few other guys, you guys got it. So now you know what to expect. You know where we want to try and go towards. Now let's take this a step down lower. Let's say we want to try and get in there for that move. What do we want to see? That's where we need to have a little bit of a lower time frame analysis. So now I'm going to leave the four hour behind because on the four hour, I'm hoping for bullish momentum. So it means that on a smaller time frame, I now need to try. I'm going to be trading against the trend if I want to try and short this. So just keep that in mind. Okay. Majority weekly trend is down. So it's your friend. So if you want to, if you want to hold a swing, like we've got that position there, if you want to hold it. You're good to do so. Daily, we are in a lateral range, which means wherever, as soon as we move into this area here, between 19.5 and 20, we're going to be open for a lot of chop. Because on the larger time frame, that's the middle of the range. There's going to be a lot of back and forth here. So we want to try and avoid trading when it gets there. We want to get our orders in down here. So when the time we're there, we're good to sit. Okay? And then... On the four hour, the argument is I want to try and get another secondary attempt at this low. Meaning price goes there, it shows strength. It goes into this demand zone, leaves it, and then we start trying to get above this range. So that's the play. And then on that level, I want to try and get a short in as a scalp on the 15 minute for that entry. So how do I do that? Well, if I go into the 15 minute, my argument would be, well, I've got all this gap over here, all this trade gap there. Now, if I look at this trade gap, 
What I'll see on the 15 minute is something that looks like this. Just gonna pull it over. And I call this a power candle because it shows you where the momentum is at. So remember the weekly is bearish. Everything is bearish around that area. There's the power candle. Now the argument around this area is, well, if I take the top, when I take the bottle and I get the middle range, that's mathematically the highest probable area where price will go towards. And we've already been there once, twice, and just now for a third time. So that's the higher probable area for me. Now, I can look for a short when we're here. But I have to understand that I can look for a short when we're there as well or there. As soon as we're above this white line, I have to forget about the idea of shorting because I want to now have more info before I then reassess short to another entry down low. Okay, so that's the goal then. So if I dive into this area over here, and I look at what's playing out over here, I do have price very close to that power candle level. I do have a higher high though, so maybe we're not done ranging for today. Because there's a high, there's a high high. Maybe we're not done. So just keep that in mind. But what you can do is, now you can say to yourself, where's momentum, my friend? There's momentum at the moment. That's my moving average. And in the end of the day, if price decides to get below this level and not make a higher high again, I'm, well, I can then start looking for the short to try and get price there. Okay, and there, what I can do on the 15 minute, remember now we've got this target here, the 15 minute, I can now go and say to myself, that structure there created the demand. If I wanna be bearish or bullish, and I wanna be greedy, I wanna leverage and I wanna get my, my leverage zone tight, that's going to be the range between 18,585 and 18,533. Stop below 18,433. That's going to be my attempt. Now, guys, full disclosure. Everybody's on par here. Everybody knows where I'm at. There's probably a 60, 70% chance that any of this is going to play out the way it is. That's why I always share the invalidation levels, the stop limit levels. I'm a trader. I don't know what the future is going to hold. I keep guessing it's like playing a hand of cards around the table like, like texas hold them sometimes i've got a good hand and i can throw more money at it but when i got a bad hand i have to fold and walk away to play another hand that's the same way you don't give up if you lose one hand you know that next time the cards might be dealt differently okay right now let's move over to ethereum everybody on par with bitcoin now uh, i'll go through the comments i see there's a lot of comments popping through here guys uh my trade is lining up with what you're saying. I'm happy that um, that you're finding confluence there, buddy. Um, uh, Gazer, it's always a pleasure, my friend. And um, yeah, so so everybody's kind of on the same part. Now let's go and look at Ethereum. I want to bring up ETH for you guys. Okay, Ethereum. The last time around we were looking at ETH, um, I think it was Monday. What Did we do ETH on Monday? Um, Joe, I think so. Let me know. Um, so we did Ethereum on Monday, and the argument was, yet again, on the weekly, I've got bearish, 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 bearish. And the argument then is, if I look at this, and I say that that is my top of my range, if I then go over to the daily, oops, head off to, over to the daily, on a big time, on a bigger time frame, one could argue that that would be my range okay but if i go on to the 12 hour i can narrow this down some more let's go into this and turn this to a 12 hour i can narrow this down some more and i can say to myself what is ethereum doing ethereum was ranging around this area and the reason why i'm ranging calling it ranging well we had a, a stop in momentum we broke out, we tested that momentum, then we left that range, we made a higher high. Happy days, around here you should be happy, it's going to go well. But then when we fell back in, we went to the same support, which was originally resistance, and we've been chopping around that level. 
So if I want to have a look at this and I want to be crystally simple, simple so trade Ethereum, you know, at a simple level, uh, what I want to say to myself is, where's the demand going to be? Well, demand's going to be there in that demand zone that sits over there. So if I want to long Ethereum, that's going to be the area where I want to long this on the 12 hour. Now, if I go and have a look at that, there's no reason to long ETH just yet, okay? Now, if I want to short Ethereum, same thing. If I look at this last accumulation, I look at the candle that did the move for me, and I use this candle to put my power candle fib on, that's going to be the area where price is going to want to short. And the reason I'm going to be a little bit more greedy is because I look at this range over here and I say to myself, there's a big inefficiency sitting right there. I'm going to highlight this and make this a bright color just for today's sake, like that. There's an inefficiency there. You can see that price accelerated through it and accelerated through it again on the way back down. So the argument is once we are here, price is going to want to capture some liquidity around that area. That's why I want to short that. So that then brings me to my sell zone, which is sitting at this area over here. So where we at with ETH at the moment, if I'm looking at the 12 hour on the daily, ETH is in an area where should we be trading it now? Guys, give me a yes or a no because of the, the location where it is. Let me know. Uh, I mean, I've just gave you the answer for Bitcoin. Um, let's see where you guys are at. Should we be trading ETH now? Or should we be waiting for ETH to give us a bigger time frame or, 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 or better structure? So here we got Manuel. No. Well done. Good answer. Anybody else? Let's see where the, where the answer comes in. Uh, I know the stream is delayed, so please keep sending it. Um, right. So that is that is the whole idea. So there's more. Uh, BDC, there's another. Marcelo says, yes. Oh, buddy, I don't, I don't want to agree with, disagree with you, but... No, it's kind of the, the, the one. Waiting, wait. Yes, not yet. Okay, so you guys got the idea. It's simple now. So we have an idea of where it wants to be. But say you have itchy trade fingers you want to get in. It means that you cannot have goals other than this. You know that if you, where we're at now, you're going to have a lot of chop. The market's going to be spiteful. It's going to feel spiteful because we're sitting in an area where it's littered by limit orders. We'll be littered by limit orders. We, we, we have a thick order book with a lot of ideas, opinions, perspective on this. So as long as we, we're sitting in this range here, it's going to be messy. So just keep that in mind. Now, if we want to go and have an ETH on a smaller time frame, now I'm going to take this and just move this to four hour, and I'm going to hit the 15 minute. Uh, no, 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 not that one. Oops, hit the 15 minute there. So if I look at the 15 minute, you can see that this is definitely a scalping market. When you get an entry, you need to get out. So from a 15-minute point of view, I kind of don't want to touch it this at this stage, to be honest with you guys. Uh, people will be drawing patterns like this. Guys would say, oh, well, there's a bearish pennant, you know, short around that level, break below that level, continue. That's all, all good and dandy. Sometimes it can be right. Sometimes it might be wrong. I, I don't know. But from my point of view, looking at this, it's a little messy. The short needs to be happening there because if I want to short this, my initial short, I would love to get it in in an area where I can at least get some good range out of it. Now, maybe that that play is not going to happen. Maybe we're going to get there. We're going to stop out. Then it's fine because then at that stage, we'll have more data, more candles, and we'll be able to look at higher time frame targets. Maybe we get a, a, a higher high from there, come back in, and then we short the short. Timing is, is, a, is a tricky thing when it comes to trading. We just have to be patient with this one. So for me, Ethereum on this basis is in an area where I don't want to touch it. So um, And ignore these. I see I didn't clean up my chart from the last time we spoke. I'm just going to take this away. There we go. Right, guys. So that's the thing. So if we then want to also... Just get an idea of how crazy things can get. The market moves in fractals. It's always going to do that. So if I use my bars pattern and I do this to there, and I take that, and I move it over here, I'm going to move that one there, and I'm going to do that, bring that down there. 
you kind of have an idea of how the market can, oops, I want to delete it, can screw with us. Maybe that goes there. Let's do that. Do, do, do. How the market can screw with us. Now, because this is the kind of emotional pattern that's printing out at the moment, what you can see is that maybe it, it, it needs to do a little bit more of this, ranging up, ranging down, ranging up, ranging down, until it then starts finding levels to continue. Now, what do we want to do? Well, let's delete this bar pattern. Go and create a range for me where I can clearly identify we're okay. So if that is the range, this would be, let's take that gray line. I'll use it now do, 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 like that. That would be the area that I would consider now. So if I really want to give myself time, because there's the last time we went down there. Let's look at the half level. Yet again, we're sitting in an area where it's almost a no trade. There's a lot of chop there. We want to see big, big candle moves. So from that point of view, still, we're sitting in a situation where I just can't grab an ETH trade, a safe ETH trade. There. And, the, and the, the, the moral of the story is, guys, if you get to a point where you've got a coin that just doesn't give you that clear-cut area, just move to another coin that does give that to you. Because in the end of the day, when shit goes away, you kind of want to know when to invalidate. You kind of want to know when to add to a position. So if it's a little messy, just put that money on something else that you can trade a little bit better. Okay. Righto. Oh, this is still the four hour. Thank you for pointing that out. Let's quickly fix this. And let's go to the 15 minute. In a hurry. There we go. So 15 minute, you can see that we're still chopping, chopping like crazy. And what we do is we create these inefficiencies. This is what the create inefficiencies. We go and fill the inefficiency, and maybe we come back down. And now with this one, there's an inefficiency sitting over there, and there's another one sitting over there. So it's just going to be chopping and ranging. If we go down to these lower levels, if we get it, if, when, and by, that would be a good area for me to look at these. Okay. Thanks for, um, for sorting uh, and showing me that, Kevin. Forgot to hit that 15 minutes. Right, guys. So there's Ethereum. Um, let's quickly see what else do we want to talk about. I can quickly go through Cardano. You guys want to have a little bit of ADA? Um, let me know. I'm going to hit this on the weekly. Cardano on the weekly. Let's quickly have a look at this. So from a weekly point of view, if we clean up the chart and just say, let's take a step back and take a breather. First things first, for anybody that's new, momentum. Cardano was trending down like crazy. But if I look at this from a weekly point of view, what we have now is this one is ranging. So from a weekly perspective, Cardano is looking better than Bitcoin. Because Bitcoin on a weekly area is still going down, where on the weekly ADA is going sideways. So there's already a little bit of positivity there. Now, that's about as far as I want to try and dive into this on the weekly. What we can see is with, with when we're in a lateral range, what you would want to see is you would want to see demand zones held. So let's have a look at this. First demand zone was, would have been there, and we didn't delete it. Or we maybe deleted it just just. But then from that point onwards, we've got another demand zone, which recently now get tested. That week, that one there. Just move it up nicely. There you go. Demand zone. So you've got a demand that's in effect now. So anything other than, uh, if you want to grab a trade now, let's put this, let the demand zone flip on there and just bring it over. There's your demand. So what we want to do is now we have supply. That's sitting over there. Okay. So if I want to take profit, if I grab along here, or there, or there, no matter where, when we get to this area, I need to sell some because we're moving into a supply area. It can break off and go and go do this, and then I would be ecstatic, and then I would look, maybe I shouldn't have sold, but the reality is you don't know what's going to happen next, so don't plan on that, that you know what's going to happen next. So there's areas that we need to keep in mind. So Cardano's area, 64 cents. 
61 cents. I'm still holding out for that on that basis. I think we can get there, right? With that being said, we've hit this demand zone now twice. And if we want to have another buy, there's nothing fast in the weekly at the moment. So let's move over to the daily. What I just want to do is I just want to quickly sync this onto the daily chart so we can have a look at that. Right, daily. There we go. From a daily point of view, what are we getting now? Okay, so we've got a range. We're creating more ranges at this stage. So it's basically chopping, 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 and then moving into this area. So from a daily point of view, it would be it would be tough to say that that is the momentum. From, from my point of view, I would rather say that this is our daily momentum at the moment, meaning that it's moving to the upside. We made a high, we're coming back down, and it's off the back of a previous high. Okay, so from that point of view, that's kind of where I would want to be with this one. I want to try and get that 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 daily momentum to continue to the upside. What I don't want to see with this one is, is we're doing this. Because then it's not ready to move. It's just moving into a, a lateral accumulation range. And that's that's the, the warning sign for, for Cardano. If it comes back down into this area, guys, and keeps on doing this, keeps on doing this, it's not showing us that it wants to move. The, the, the trick to this whole thing is, with anything trading, once you see an explosive move, get your ass in, because you will continue with that until the momentum moves out. But if we start doing this, where we're grinding and we're grinding and we're grinding and we're grinding, there's no momentum there. I'd rather want to be trading in something different. From a DCA point of view, dollar cost average, I want Cardano and hold it forever. From a weekly point of view, that was probably the best buy. And can we get another opportunity? Yes. Probably maybe in April next year for that matter. You know, randomly speaking about it. Because this is a DCA zone for Cardano. And can this fall lower and go into this area over here? Yes, it can. So you don't throw all your money in and think, I'm going to retire now. You buy a little bit. And when it's there, you buy a little bit more. And when it doubles in value, a 42 and 80, you sell half and you buy on the next low. That's the, that's the magic of dollar cost averaging. Now, Cardano, let's quickly speed this up. On the four hour, if I go into the four hour, we're rearranging. So we're sitting in a situation where we're chopping, chopping, chopping. Um, we can argue that there's a little bit of an upwards trend at the moment forming. So maybe we are, we are not ranging. Let's leave the ranging part for the daily and for the weekly. Um, but on the four hour, we might initiate an uptrend, which means then if you want to be bullish on the four hour, this line needs to hold. You can't be holding buy zones out there. If it does this, it's going to take more time to establish another move. Then you have to reassess and wait. So on the four hour, if I really want to grab this, four hour, the momentum is big. You've got big swings to the upside. Um, let's have a look at this. There we had a consolidation. There we had a candle moving through. So we're sitting in a situation where there's going to be a lot of selling pressure around that area there. So if we get above that range, we'll probably go back to 53 cents. So your game plan is going to be is to try and say to yourself, okay, whatever I want to do, say I want to buy right now. If I want to buy right now, I'm going to have to hold that, that this demand that's created yet needs to hold. That's a 3.8%. So this is a spot rate to make 15%. So there's your spot rate for Cardano. If you want to try and grab that, you're going to have to do this. Look at that area as your invalidation. Give yourself about a 3.5% birth. And then the argument would be, then you're going to hold for about 14%. That's the goal. Where we're at now, if you want to leverage trade uh, and you want to short your Cardano, you can look at that candle wick there for the short. Very risky, though. I would rather be, because the four hours telling me we are going up, I would rather be trying to long this. Don't want to dive into too small a time frames. We're about 40 minutes in. I want to speed up the various coins now. Okay, so um, here's a list of all the coins that you guys did ask for. Uh, we did our weave. So I gave our weave a while back. So I said from a DCA point of view, uh, our weave is in a really good area. I like the fact that it's where it's at. 
from a trader point of view, our weave still needs to give me something bullish. Now let's let's talk about that for, for a second. Bullish means go and beat these highs. Come back down and then I'll buy. So that's the that's the thing for our weave. So DCA, brilliant. Trading-wise, I won't trade it. I will short this if I really want to, but we're back at a half level. So it's a tricky, a tricky area now. We can expect a little bit of chop. That would be the ideal area to short it from, around $12. So let's see what all we does. Uh, for the time being, there's going to be a little bit, uh, I would let a little bit more water go under the bridge. Um, let's go, go over, and I see there's a question for BNB. While I'm here on Binance, let's do BNB. Uh, BN, do, 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 BNB. I'm not seeing it. There it is. Okay. Looks like the market's front running the news. Maybe they are. That's that's definitely something we can consider. Okay, so let's just just dive into BNB. I'm going to go daily quickly with BNB. So from a perspective, there's your bearish momentum. We're done. Now BNB is ranging. So we can look argue that this is going to be the area where it's going to want to range towards. If you want to short this, there's the higher high. You can actually do this and say that is your your shakeout range. So there, BNB is in a range from uh, from a, from a point of view, a daily point of view. Uh, on a four hour, if we move into smaller time frames, BNB is trending down, guys. So I would not necessarily want to be looking at BNB in that way. If BNB goes and gives me a higher high on the scandal, which this has the potential to do, I like the way it's almost setting up for what can be seen as a V reversal. If BNB goes and does this, then we can maybe talk. Then we can maybe talk. But until then, BNB is trending down. If you want to short BNB, you're welcome to do so, but you need to understand where the, the limitation is of your short setup. So if you want to go and grab a BNB, your argument is it's not going to go. Everything is going to come back down. That's still an area where there was supply created that initiated this move. So if supply wants to hold, that's the area everybody that wants to short needs to protect. So you need to have your stop above that range because obviously there's going to be some volatility if price gets in there. TP range, well, from a big perspective, you can, you can be really greedy with BNB. So if the short sticks and the market goes and does another test, BNB would be probably be good for another 250. So there's a nice 12% there. Okay. Um, something I want to share with you guys. Today, um, uh, Fed Chair um, Powell is going to be speaking. Um, Forex Factory is a very nice uh, website. I like to go there because it gives me all the important dates and it highlights the important ones and reads as well. So it just makes life easy, forexfactory.com. Now, one thing that I want to show out is this morning I checked again. So our FOMC, we're sitting in a situation where everybody's now really getting comfortably assured that we're going to get another 75 basis point rate up. So the, the argument and the discussion today with uh, with the FOMC is, if Powell comes out and he's dovish, you know, says it's not going to be that bad, he's liking the figures, and, 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 and. But the fact that people are expecting bad news, that might be what we need to get Bitcoin and to get the markets to do a little bit of a rally. I'm going to bring up the S&P 500 for that and to just support that angle. So if I look at the S&P 500, So uh, when I look at the S&P 500, this is the area where I wanted to scalp a buy. So it kind of went below my range, hovered around that area. And uh, yeah, so I can't really say that I did get the buy because I didn't. I wanted to buy prior to the shakeout. So just going to delete that. But that was the area where I was going to take some profit. So it went to that range there. So now the argument is, if that is the case, what do we want to see? Well, I want to see price move back down. Price needs to move back down to at least this level here. Just going to do that for now. So we're looking at a 39.4. So I'm going to bring this line up. I don't want to do that. I'm going to duplicate that line there. So there's the line to what? 39.400. So say Jerome Paul comes out. Jerome Paul comes out and he's very hawkish. The possibility is that it might already be priced in. And that is the excuse that the market would need to get price to that level there, 39.4. Bigger picture, we were just 
discussing this big divergence. And the fact that it made a lower low there doesn't delete the big swing. There we had a complex wave. There we had a five wave impulse. That's one set of movement. That's one correction. And between these two, there's definitely a divergence in the formation. So that is the reason. So maybe that's that. And then lastly, this is a bullish engulfing structure from the last move back down. That's good. That's bullish. So I expect Powell coming out. That's just me looking at the charts. I, I don't know nothing. Don't trust me. Um, I expect Powell coming out and being dovish today, saying that maybe we're going to go half a percent and so forth. And it's off the back that our advanced estimate from the GDP came back yesterday, and it came back at 1.4%. So a 0% GDP, you know, when we look at the real real numbers, the, the, the third estimate, which is only going to be the end of the month, 29th of September, would be good because now we're moving from uh, a minus 9 to a minus 6. Maybe we go to minus 1. So then we do have that situation where the market's turned around. Maybe the craze and the fear has moved away and subsided and so forth. So let's see how this plays out. Uh, look, energy is always going to be a big thing. There's still the big worry around energy and the availability. Europe is going into the winter now. And uh, those things can definitely play a role. But, I mean, that's stuff that's kind of out of the out of our hands. We can't really... We can't really do anything. We're going to have to trade the market as it gives us the price. So, guys, you like the content, hit the like, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell because we will then um, you'll get notified when we go live again. Right. Now, let's do a little bit more alts. Anybody want to do a little more alts? Let me know. And for those that um, that's watching this recorded, not live, guys, let me know in the comment section which alts you want me to chart. I'll chart them and I'll post them in the community tab on the YouTube as well and as well as in our Discord. If you want to join our Discord, guys, remember there's the QR code. Just scan that, pause the screen, scan that QR code. It takes you over to the premium group. Now, the premium group uh, is an area where we've got a, a group of traders, and what these guys do is they scan the markets for us. Last week, let's, let's be honest, full disclosure, was a shitty week. Nobody really made money scalping. It was in a bad zone. But we're sitting in an, in an area where there was a big shakeout, you know, the order book will be thin. A lot of people will be sitting on the side, which is good for us. It gives us an opportunity to go and grab that. Now, if you want to go over, head over to the premium group. You want to go do that, guys. We've got uh, a partnership agreement with OKX. We've got a partnership uh, agreement. Let's just click on all of them. I see they've now stopped um, loading. Uh, we've got a partnership agreement with BitGet, Bybit, um, Primex, BT, and Mexi. Now, why? all these agreements let's quickly there they are loading now uh, why do we have that well simple we want to give you access to the premium group for free these guys are willing to sponsor that access all you need to do is when you're in the discord click on the google sheet form it makes it very simple select the exchange of your choice once you've done that say next and then just give us your email address i don't want to do that my email address There you go. Open your account, and that's it. And send us. Oh no, I've already filled in my email. I apologize, guys. And send me your. Um, yeah, in this case, just your email address. And then just say submit. Oops. It will send a message through to me. And um, if you've done what was required, you get access to the premium group. That's how simple and quick and easy it is. It's really quick, guys. And we've tried to make it as simple as possible for you guys. So that's all you need to do. Everything is in it. Select your exchange. Send us your details uh, or your user ID, depends on the exchange. And that's it. It's submit and done. You'll get access to the, uh, the, the role will be emailed to you, uh, everything you need to do. Right. Now, let's have a look at alt uh, comment sections. Let's see. I've got near. I've got, uh, I've got near, two nears. Let's maybe have a look and then phantom. So I'm going to bring up my screen and let's hit up for uh, a near. Let's quickly see. I charted, where did I chart near the other day? I want to try and find an existing near chart. This is KuCoin. Oh, let's just save time and let's hit near here. There we go. All right. So near. Um, 
from a daily perspective, let's just see whether we trend. We are lateral ranging as well. Maybe we can argue it's going on the upside because we are holding demand. So there's some positivity around for near. Expectation management for anybody that is uh, wanting to get into near. Just, just simple expectation management. Consider this, guys, that you have these areas where price is going to reach supply. So think about that whenever you want to enter your near. If I go on to a smaller time frame, let's go into a four hour. Let's see what we're doing. So on the four hour, near is it's creating a triple top. Now, what does that mean? Well, there is a lot of limit orders slowing the market down. So demand is selling into a sell wall where there's an order book scattered with near tokens, basically selling the price. So not selling in the sense of pressing sell when it gets there. It, that that condition to want to sell is sitting there. So as soon as price moves in there, it just gets all the demand just gets eaten up. Now, what happens with this is people look at this and say, well, maybe it gets stronger, maybe it gets weaker. My argument is simple. If that order is there and it gets gobbled up and there's another wave of demand, demand keeps on growing. Some new demand somewhere that inevitably breaks when that breaks. That's where we're going to want to try and uh, ride this thing a little bit longer. So is there a buy at this very moment for me on the four hour? Uh, it's a tricky thing. Not all trades or, or, or price structures are necessarily good buys. Where would I want to try and buy this? Well, at this stage, this area is a danger zone. Anything that's there is going to be bad. So I want to try and get in on near it around this range over here, maybe that demand zone sitting there. So if I want to be greedy with near, try and get in. If we get that market shakeout done and near set, falls back down to about $4, that would be a good buy because I can hold that with a tight stop because we've got two demand zones there. Now, a lot of people will do this. Guys, I just want to point this out. A lot of people will be trying to do this. So understand that price can fall a little bit lower. Now, what it does when it falls lower, it goes to this hidden demand zone. So I'm just going to get my FIB. I'm going to smack it in there and there. So the reality is, whatever you do, consider that a $3.90 and a stop at $3.80. That's going to be your area just to make sure that you don't fall victim to everybody trying to buy there and then the market staying negative, Bitcoin staying negative for a little bit longer, and then it just goes into that range there. So keep that in mind. That's my that's my goal for near. I'm going to leave that like that. Um, and that point of view, I mean, we don't have a lot of momentum at the moment from this. It's not trending strong. So there we had momentum, and now we are we are moving down and we're chopping a lot. So when we get there, and you grab that buy, if and when. You want to see strong momentum. You don't want to see chop. Otherwise, just give up. Look for one that's giving you strong momentum just to make sure that you don't get, get uh, caught with this one. Okay. Uh, I see. Let's see what else we have here. I've got Ethereum Classic. I actually did Ethereum Classic. ETH Classic. Well, for me, the main thing is, guys, I'm in on this one. Like we explained to you guys, this area here, yet again, all that we have is we've been sitting around that half level on that candle. And what I'm saying to myself is simple. If price goes below this level, we are losing demand. Then I don't want to be interested in this. We did make a higher high. The argument was if we make a higher high, we'll be able to grab another buy at, at this level. And for me at this stage, I want to just give myself a little bit more detail, data or details. If I go into the 12 hour and I'm looking at this, this was a big sell-off, similar to that that we just seen. So what I would want to try and buy is I want to try the demand zone buy. Because if I try and buy at this stage, the reality is, is there's going to be a reason where people want to put their stops there if you want to short. There's going to be a reason people are going to want to put their stops there. They're going to long. And now what are we at? We're in that area where stuff is going to be tricky. So you want to go and buy their stops. So you have to wait for their stops to buy. So price goes down, maybe comes back in tests, that's your buy. Price goes up, comes back in, that's maybe your short. Okay, so that's for me, my my, ETH, uh, my Ethereum classic on that point of view. From a long-term perspective, you want to be holding ETH bags for a long time, I'm still thinking that this, this buy, the spot buy, long-term buy, 
is good for ETH going to $60. That's off the back that Bitcoin goes back up to at least $24 and so forth. Okay, so that would be that one to keep in mind. Let's have a look at SHIB. Shiba Inu. Shiba Inu trending down strong. We had a big spike at this stage. We were looking for an additional short there. And, um, and let's just clean up some of the mess. Let's just do this. I'm just going to clean it up, clean it up a little bit more. Bigger picture, it's still in a lateral range. Okay. And what we now have is we now know where is the supply liquidity. So in theory, our next big bull run, whenever that's going to happen for SHIP, price is going to need to get above this range before we can even think about these targets. There's our liquidity. Where would I want to buy this one? From an investment point of view, I would want to buy the demand. I'm going to want to buy over here. That's going to be the area when I want to buy. If I look at this range here now, and I look at what's happening now, Shiba Inu is for me testing the half level. So it's bouncing on top of that. So it's experiencing a lot of chop. So if you're going to want to leverage trade this, yet again, it's going to be choppy. It's going to be messy. So you're going to have to eliminate some of the clutter. Let's go on to a 15 minute. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to have to look at this from this point of view and say to yourself, right, I've got that and I've got that to consider. Price goes below this. I'm not interested. Gets back in it. I would want to see that the structure gives me a higher high. See there? It goes out, comes back in. Gives me a high high. Let's just zoom in. Only I can see what I'm looking at now. Let's do this. Um, there we've got the last engulfing structure. And that point there is the one that I'm interested in. Comes back in, makes the higher high. Then I go buy demand. Okay? That's my play for this one. Where's supply? Well, there's supply sitting. So at the moment, if I were to use my FIB, there's the big... The big move, and if I use that candle, is that candle? Oops. We're sitting in a situation where, if I want to continue trading the momentum to the downside, the the, the downside is is going to be it's going to be the preferred angle that I want to try and go into. Okay, so there you guys have it. So I would want to have a look at that. If I look at this now from a, a, a different point, different angle, and I say, well, that is the level higher. And we've stepped up, and this is our range stop. Then I can say, well, if I want to be a little bit more aggressive and I want to get a ship in now, what I have is I've got a, a big demand zone sitting right over there. Right there. Strong demand zone sitting right there. Okay. And with demand zones, what I'm trying to do so I'm just trying to get in somewhere at the midpoint. The reason being, that's going to be the fairest, most average price. The biggest chance of getting uh, my order filled and with the fairest, tightest stop limit that I can have to get that order filled. So if anything happens to ship and we get a, a, we get a Bitcoin that dumps down or something like that, I can try getting there. But now... That's then off the back that my tight, my stop is going to be tight. It has to be below this level. It goes below that level. I want to be out. I want to then wait for more structure. So as soon as we do this, we open the door for that. And that's an additional, additional 2% that price can move down. And then I can rethink it buying some structures over there. I think this is going to be the one that wants to hold because that's the continuation of the momentum. Um, so, yeah. Keep an eye on that one. I think that there's a scalp and a leverage trade. Skilled traders only. Make sure you don't just ape into this one, um, you know, blindly. Right, um, guys, let me know in the comments. Any more coins? Uh, let's quickly see. Uh, I've looked at ABAX a while ago. Go there. Where is ABAX? There we go. I looked at AVAX a while ago, and from a daily perspective, all the alts are now moving into this area where we're moving into lateral accumulation. Lateral accumulation, the longer the accumulation, the bigger the move to the outside. So this accumulation here, I wouldn't, I wouldn't look at higher than 56. 
So if you're DCA buy and you want to take some profit on your DCA buy, 56 is going to be the area where I would think is max potential for this one. Um, then with that being said, smaller time frame, I'm not going to go into this. You guys got the just now. This one has already now done. It looks a lot like uh, BTC, to be honest with you, uh, with Bitcoin being in that area now, falling back in. Um, so use what was said there. Get your levels, get your structure in. You can use that as a structure. And uh, you can use this as a midpoint. Do that. And this is the area where you'll experience the chop. So if you want a short, short from there. If you want a long, longer demand zone test. There's a strong demand zone over there. There's a strong demand zone which has been deleted. So your best play would be to try and see if we can get that moved down and try and long around that range there, knowing that your stop needs to accommodate that area over there. So uh, you're looking at maybe 17, stop below 15. That's going to be the area where we want to try and look for it. Um, we, we are, yeah, this is a little bit, this one is going to be choppy, but this is good from, the, from a big point of view because we are ranging this, this one does look, does have good potential. Right, let's move on. I see we've got Phantom, FT, FTM, Phantom, Phantom, Phantom. Phantom, same story, guys. Like I said, I really like Phantom for this reason over here. What we have is a Phantom in a, in a, in a range. So from, from that point of view, we are ranging, we're ranging lateral. We are not making higher highs, though. So keep that in mind. And uh, if I were to do this and this, any long that you will take, if you take a long on this one from a trader perspective, any long that you can take, uh, let's move that line there and let's bring that up there. This is going to be a big take profit area. Consider that 35 cent phantom going to be a highly volatile take profit area. Reasons for price to go there, I don't really see that much reasons for now. What I can say is, uh, is that this demand zone could be a good buy 20 cents, and you can look at 22 cents. So those would be good areas to accumulate a little bit of phantom. And remember that on the daily, phantom's trending down. So you can be patient. You don't need to do anything about it just yet. It's still trending down. So as long as it keeps on moving momentum down, there's no real real reason to get in. You can take a little stab at it at these areas here, like I said, 2260, and you can take another stab at 2070, thereabout. But those are going to be tight trades where you want to have your stop below the wick, this this demand. You want to you want to see the demand hold. So you can grab those from that point onwards. What do you want to see? I want to see a higher high from the previous accumulation. So if that's the accumulation, if we range here for a few more days, we go down, we go back, I would want to see a higher high on wherever this, this structure is going to move. In order for me to say, okay, right, I'm good, we can continue on to the upside and change this lateral move maybe into, uh, or this changes momentum into some bullish positive momentum. Right. Uh, we're over an hour, guys. I'm going to say goodbye now. I'm going to have to jump it off. The YouTube is going to punish me. They're going to say that we spend too much fluff on this. Move over to the Discord, please. I'll send some charts in there. Go comment, a few, drop a few comments in the Discord. I will send my charts in there for you guys as well so you can have a look. Uh, other than that, special thanks to our sponsors, guys. As always, um, they make premium available for you guys. Um, We've got OKX, BitGet, Bybit, Prime, and Mexi. And each one have, has got their own conditions that you need to do to get sponsored access. All you need to do is fill in this form, do what you need to do according to this form, and you will have your sponsored access. That's it from me, guys. I'm going to say thank you very much. I really enjoy charting with you guys, and I uh, hope you enjoyed watching it. And um, let's hope it, um, it plays out. Put your stops in. Remember... I don't know what the future holds. Um, Bitcoin and the FOMC is going to be crazy, so there will be some volatility. So if you leverage, keep your leverage low, 
and um, make sure that because you can build a position over time, you don't need to hurry into everything. Guys, I want to say thanks as always and uh, keep hustling. Keep hustling. Head over to the Discord, but I'll send you a chart there.